Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HEC HMS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing subbasin transform methods, specifically the SCS unit hydrograph, Snyder unit hydrograph, and user specified unit hydrograph methods. All right, what I have on the screen here is my HMS. Uh, it's a watershed that's been delineated, and I've got multiple subbasins here. So I'm just going to zoom in here on subbasin seven. And we're going to use this as our example for this lesson. So I'll go ahead and click on Subbasin 7. Then over down here in the Components Editor, I have Transform Methods. So uh, what we'll talk about today is the SCS Unit Hydrograph, the Snyder Unit Hydrograph, and uh, User Specified Unit Hydrograph Methods. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's select the Snyder Unit Hydrograph Method and then click on the Transform tab up here in the Components Editor. Before we get started, I want to discuss unit hydrographs in general and some of their characteristics. For instance, a unit hydrograph is used to model the runoff from a rainfall event in a watershed or a drainage basin uh, resulting from a unit of excess rainfall over a specified duration. And when I'm talking about excess rainfall, that refers to the rainfall that exceeds the infiltration capacity of the soil and other losses such as interception, evaporation, and surface storage. What I have here on the screen here is the HMS technical reference manual for Schneider unit hydrograph. So this is the runoff method. If you scroll down just a little bit, we now see the diagram of a hydrograph. So this is the discharge as a function of time and then the rainfall event. Uh, some of the key characteristics of a hydrograph we see here are that, um, first of all, a hydrograph is specific to the watershed. So each watershed or subbasin would have a unique uh, parameters for its own hydrograph or unit hydrograph. Uh, secondly, it's linear so that it can be scaled up linearly. For instance, if there are two units of rainfall excess, then the resulting hydrograph would be twice the magnitude but it would still be the same duration. That's fixed. Maybe it's one hour or six hour duration. Uh, it assumes that rainfall is uniformly distributed both in space and time over the watershed or the subbasin. So this uh, represents a uniform rainfall up here, this square shape. Also, the unit hydrograph represents a single rainfall event. Multiple rainfall events can be added together if the watershed or subbasin assumes the superposition principle. All right, a few other shapes to point out is first we have the rising limb, which is the increase of runoff through the outlet. And then eventually it reaches a peak re uh, outflow, a peak release, Q sub P. And then after that, there's a reset receding limb or recession limb. That's a gradual decrease of the runoff. There's also the duration, that's the total time. So that's the horizontal axis in this hydrograph plot. The area under the curve represents the total volume of runoff. And this lag time, T sub P, represents the time delay between the centroid of the rainfall event and the peak of the hydrograph. So here's the centroid of the rainfall event and the peak hydrograph. So this is the time duration. I'm only bringing that up because we are going to be uh, referring to these some of these terms in this lesson. T sub P, for instance, may be approximated based on uh, constant times the T sub R. Anyway, this is the technical reference manual. I will leave a link to uh, this page in the description to this video. All right, so we do have a couple more equations here about like the T sub P. Uh, also, the Q sub P is the peak flow rate, and this uh, C sub P is the um, peaking coefficient, so that shows up a few times as well. All right, let's go back to HMS. We have our Snyder unit hydrograph method selected. Let's go ahead and start with the standard method. So with standard method, we need to provide the standard lag in hours. This is that T sub P, which is the length of time between the centroid of the precipitation mass and the peak flow of the resulting hydrograph. So I'm just going to go and say it's 1.9 hours. And then the peaking coefficient, that's the C sub P. That's the next value here. This value typically ranges from like 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 for mountainous watersheds with a sharper hydrograph that drain faster, 0 0.5 for sort of an average hilly watershed, and 0 0.75 to 0 0.9 for more of a flat lowlands watershed, which would have a more broad-shaped 
hydrograph. The next method is the Fort Worth district method. And now we have some different parameters to fill out here. This method is typically used for watersheds near the Dallas Fort Worth or San Antonio uh, areas in Texas or watersheds that are like those watersheds. So we have a few parameters like the length in miles. This represents the length along the main water course from the outlet of the subbasin up to the most hydrologically remote point of the subbasin boundary. Next is the centroidal length in miles. This is the length along the main water course from the uh, outlet point up to a point opposite of the subbasin centroid. The weighted slope here is in units of feet per mile. Again, this is just U.S. customary units, though, so it may be different if you're using metric. And the weighted slope represents the, the slope of the main water course between points located at 10% upstream of the outlet all the way up to 85% upstream of the outlet along the length of the main water course. And again, this is measured from the sub-basin outlet. I'll just pop a number in here. Urbanization percentage re represents the percentage of the sub-basin that has been urbanized. Basically, it means that there's streets, there's uh, sidewalks, there's gutters, there's uh, storm drain systems, either under the road or channels or canals that have been built to basically help facilitate or convey the storm water runoff to the outlet. So I'm just going to say 15%. Percent sand represents the percentage of the area of the subbasin here that is sand or has high sandy type uh, infiltration rates as opposed to something that is impervious like a pavement or something that is just low infiltration rates like a clay type soil. And then the peaking coefficient, we saw that before uh, from the standard method. Next up is the Tulsa district. And what we see here is a lot of overlap for length, centroidal length, and weighted slope. These are the same that um, parameters as the Fort Worth district. So go ahead and use those uh, parameter descriptions. And then the last parameter here is the percentage of channelization. This represents the percentage of the subbasin where the drainage system has been improved to more efficiently carry runoff to the outlet. So this is, sounds a lot like the percent urbanization that we have, we're have. we looking at in the Fort Worth district method. Okay, well, that is it for the Snyder unit hydrograph method. Uh, the next up is the Soil Conservation Service unit hydrograph method, or SCS. So let's go ahead and switch to that and then select the transform tab. What we have here are just two fields. There's a field for the graph type and lag time. Now, we, we've seen lag time before already. This is that T sub P. So what, we can just type in a number of minutes. Of course, it, it's all very specific to the watershed or the subbasin. When using the SCS method, it takes into account the total volume of water that has uh, reached the outflow before Q sub P. If it's a completely symmetric hydrograph, then it would be 50%. Oftentimes, the rising limb is steeper than the recession limb, in which case less than 50% will um of the water will have passed through the outlet at the moment of the peak flow and the default is 37.5 percent but of course that can change the peak rate factor here ranges from 100 all the way up to 600 um, at a step of 50 as you notice here and there are two special cases which are a little bit more common and that's 484 and 284. so for flatter watersheds where there that are slower to drain you would use a peak rate factor closer to 100 and if it's a steeper watershed a peak rate factor of 600 that would be for um, more steeper faster draining watersheds this peak rate factor is meant to describe how peaked or how sharp the hydrograph is in relationship to the time of concentration what i have on the screen here is a scs unit hydrograph method discharge uh, equation here so Q sub P is the peak discharge. That peak rate factor is uh, in the numerator. Then we have the area. Q is the total uh, runoff depth in inches or millimeters. And then T sub P is that time to peak, which is the lag time here in minutes. The last method I want to discuss in this lesson is the user specified unit hydrograph. Select the sub basin and then go down to user specified unit hydrograph and then select the transform tab. Now we have two different fields to provide. The first one is the unit hydrograph, and that currently says none. It's going to be a paired data set. 
and the number of passes. Let's go ahead and create a paired data set from the paired data manager. We go up to components and then paired data manager. For type, we're going to select unit hydrograph curves and then click new. And then for a name, we'll just call it unit hydro seven or whatever name you want to call it. You can enter a description as well, but that's optional. So I'll go ahead and click create and then I'll close that. Now up here in our watershed explorer, we have a paired data manager directory or unit hydrograph curves directory within that. And then finally our unit hydro uh, paired data set that we have. Uh, once we select that down here in the components editor, we have a data source, either manual entry or a DSS file, and then the units, the interval, and the duration. So uh, what we select here would affect the data that we would type in for our manual entry. For instance, if I'm going to select the time interval, that can range from one minute all, all the way up to one day. We could say something like it's uh, 15 minute intervals. And then the total duration may be, say, three hours. The duration can range from one minute um, all the way up to one day. So let's say this is uh, three hours. And then, yeah, we'll keep the units in CFS. So then if we were using manual entry, what we would do is we'd come over here. We type in the times as the independent variables and then the discharge. So this is what is meant by a user-specified unit hydrograph. We're literally defining the hydrograph by typing in the numbers right here. Okay, so once numbers are typed in, you can click the graph to see what that looks like, and then um, that can be it. The other option for data source is the DSS file. So if you select that, then you'd still have to specify the uh, the file name and the path name, and if, of the paired data set that's saved as a DSS file, and then of course the values would have to be saved in that file. All right, so with whatever data source method you go with, uh, it doesn't matter as long as um, it's saved as a unit hydrograph curves in your paired data manager. And when you do that, it should show up here as an option for the unit hydrograph. This passes here, it represents the number of, um, I guess, corrections made in the process of minor inflection points in the S curve that is used to convert the unit hydrograph from the input duration to the duration required for the computational interval. So for instance, if we defined a hydrograph that had a duration of three hours, but the storm was only one hour, then this S curve process that is used to convert the three hour unit hydrograph to a one hour would involve uh, these passes to make sure the data is correct. Well, that's it for this lesson. We talked about the user specified unit hydrograph, the SES unit hydrograph method, and the Snyder unit hydrograph method as different ways to compute runoff um, for subbasin transform methods in HEC HMS.